Welcome back into the North Star Takes podcast. I'm Bailey Paulicki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, so if you're a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that subscribe button. If you're a Wild fan, smash the like button on this video because the Wild are officially in the playoffs. Um, we've known the matchup for a while now. It's the St. Louis Blues, but the Wild did clinch home ice with that win over Colorado on Friday. Uh, team record, 113 regular season points, which actually only finished six behind the avalanche. The only difference between us and Colorado this year was three wins, which is insane considering the gap that Colorado had on us. They kind of stumbled down the stretch and uh, the Wild were able to catch up. So the Blues obviously were hot on our trail, 109 points to finish out the season as they kind of sputtered the last couple games and gave us the home ice. But the Wild have a tall task in front of them, Liberta, because they haven't beaten the Blues in a very long time. The Blues have had our number. Um, so I guess what are your thoughts on the series in general? The Wild have home ice. They're, they appear to be fully healthy going into the playoffs. I know there was an injury scare with Felino and Zuccarello, but it sounds like they'll both be ready to roll. So I guess where do you want to start with this Wild Blues matchup? Yeah, I guess really I'd, I'd probably start with can the Wild – Oh, we've been talking about this for weeks, but can the Wild finally break this slump against the Blues? Feels like every time we get in these games with them, it's just it's it's close, but just not quite. And mm-hmm. I, I think we, obviously you have to put together four wins in seven games to get past them, move on to the next round. So like I think this is a tall order for us, considering our track record, that not only this year but the going back to uh, what was it twenty twenty or twenty nineteen as far as our our record head to head record goes. So yeah. I think it's like. Really, can our stars rise to the occasion here and carry us against a really good team in their own right? But it's just there, there's just something there that we haven't been able to get past. But maybe, maybe now is the time. But yeah, and we had that same issue with Nashville. Yeah, and we beat them the last game we played against them, albeit in overtime. But um, yeah, like you said, the games have been close, but we just haven't quite been able to get over the hump against the Blues. They're very similar teams, I think, because the Blues have some, you know elite speed offensively. They also have some guys that can kind of grime it up and, um, you know, get chippy and slow the game down and get into fights and stuff like that. Like we do. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. I do think home ice is a big deal. I would expect St. Louis is probably going to steal one here at the X in one of these first two games, but if they don't, the wild have a significant advantage, but I mean, I could see this thing going all the way to game seven and then the wild have that home ice advantage but uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I mean, I'm interested to see how we do. We went to seven last year with Vegas in the playoffs. Obviously, a thrilling series. But Vegas was kind of able to successfully shut down Kaprizov. I'll be curious if the Blues somehow have a plan of attack for him if they're able to shut him down. But the difference is this year, like you know, Kevin Fiala is going to be coming for you. Um, Matt Boldy's been really good. Zuccarello has had a fantastic season. So. Um, and of course, if that grief line with uh, Erickson at Greenway and Felino is intact, they're a tough line to play against too. So um, there's so many different you know angles that the Wild can come at you from. But what I'm really looking for is can Kirill Kaprizov kind of put his stamp on this playoff series? Yeah, for sure. I, I think you really brought up a good point there with last year's playoff series against Vegas. Kaprizov was kind of factored out of it, but we still – found a way to grind it to seven games. But this year, I think we're definitely going to need it more than ever. Mm -hmm. And I think we will get it just because he's one of eight players in the NHL this year with over 100 points and easily the franchise record. So I think this guy has just taken more and more steps towards being a top five player in this league. So I I don't see these playoffs being any different there. And I think if if he's going, then this wild team can definitely feed off that and – it should carry us most of the way. Obviously, you're still going to need some uh, supplemental performances from guys like you said, Fiala, Boldy, you know, the rest of them that are all having these career years this year. Just got to yeah. take advantage of it now and continue to build good momentum that we have at the end of this season. And we won a lot of games, but now it really counts, and this is where you got to have it. So I hope we learned something from last year and find a way to put it all together and carry us past this first round for the first time in seven years. So yeah. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for this. And it's just comes at the right time too with the uh with the Wolves loss the other night and limiting yeah. them to the playoffs. Now we yeah. got a new playoff series to get excited about. So that's cool. But I think I think yeah it's just getting off on the right foot at home. I think taking care of home ice. We didn't even have any games at the X against the Blues. I I wasn't even aware of this that we didn't play the Blues at the X this year. 
we only had the one home game. That was the Winter Classic. Otherwise, we played wow. two at St. Louis. So, yeah, I, I didn't even know that until today. But I think that'll be good to get some real, like, usual, normal home ice advantage there. Because I know that, obviously, the Winter Classic, that's its own thing. So, it'll mm-hmm. be kind of nice to play a traditional home game and see what we got. I think that'll that'll be the best for this team. So, uh, definitely, getting like you said, if we can get up to all, that's huge. And then then you're putting a ton of pressure on the Blues to have to get it done in games three and four. So curious to see how this series starts. Yeah, for sure. And I know I brought up, like, I, I really want to see Kaprizov put his stamp on the series, but you're yeah. right. We're we're going to need supplemental performances from, like, a Ryan Hartman who had a career high in goals this season. Exactly. Um, Fiala's been on fire. I'm not too worried about him because he's shown he can perform in playoff-type atmospheres. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Joel Erickson at career high goal season, Marcus Foligno career high goal season. Um, you know, just, just great performances from these guys. Cam Talbot's been rock solid down the stretch. flurry has been pretty darn good since he's been here. Yeah. Um, I guess that would be the one interesting thing is what the Wild are going to do in net. Yeah. Because, go ahead. How's, Evan, how's Evanson going to play that, you think? My gut and what I would do is Cam Talbot deserves game one because yeah. flurry has got the experience, no doubt about it. He's got, you know, three Stanley Cups. But, like – Cam Talbot's been so good down the stretch here. He's outperformed Flurry, really. Flurry's kind of let in some soft goals here and there, but overall has performed pretty well. Um, but this has been Talbot's team, you know, the last couple of years. You know, he wasn't playing well. They brought in Flurry, and then Talbot just plays phenomenal throughout, throughout the rest of the season. So it's I think it's got to be his net at least to start. And I think if he wins game one, you got to give it to him probably again in game two. Yes. But say you lose game one, then you got the excuse to flip it over to Flurry. So True. it's a it's a very good problem to have. But uh I think starting with Flurry would just maybe be a mistake because you know you got you got all the confidence that Cam Talbot's riding right now. And I think it'd be a good thing to keep that going. Especially I think he was the one he closed out the game against Colorado, right, on Friday. Yeah. So yeah, I think so. yeah. So I think that, you know, keep that confidence rolling uh coming into the playoffs as well. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I think you brought a good point there that it's like it's a win-win scenario because these guys are both professionals. Like they both have level heads where it's it's not going to get too get too contentious, I guess, in the mm-hmm. in the locker room. So I, I think you could probably roll with either one. It would be fine. But at the same time, like you said, with the way Talbot's been playing, I think he's got to get game one. And then if he loses and it's kind of shaky there, then, yeah, but, I mean, a Hall of Fame goalie to turn to, which is a nice thing to have in your back pocket. So yeah, I, I think either one would present a good option. But like you said, Talbot's probably more deserving right now. But obviously that situation is very fluid. And I think it's – I think either either one is probably going to be up to the task. But, yeah, just roll with Talbot to start. And oh, what was I going to say? Um, no, maybe I'll think of it in a little bit, but I guess. But, I, I mean, no, that's what I was going to say. I was going to bring up, again, I know we keep referencing last year's playoff series, but that was the only playoff series we have with really this group of guys. So yeah. I, I think looking back on that, too, another point I can take away from that and really backing up Talbot is really think about games one and then game five, where we mm-hmm. won both of those and – tough in a tough environment in Vegas where uh game one getting off on the right foot went in a really scrappy one nothing game and then mm-hmm. in game five especially when we got completely outshot like that's a game you you don't win probably nine times out of ten yeah but it's like Talbot was just out there making huge plays when he was really left out to dry numerous times so it was just another game we grinded out to force it back to the X to get to a game six where we picked up the win there too to make it all the way to a winner take all game seven. So I, yeah. I think that that certainly uh, to Talbot's credit is is really a good reason to turn back to him again in this postseason. And I know again too, you can also say like, well, we well we lost the flurry, like the team we lost to was yeah. rolling flurry out there. But at the same time, I think Talbot definitely made the most of it, where he he deserves a chance both based off of last year's postseason and the end of this season. So. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a good problem to have, but yeah, I think I think you just got to give the benefit of the doubt to Talbot, and then you just go from there. Whatever happens yeah. from there, you can kind of you know play it as you go. And Absolutely. I'm guessing I'm guessing that's the way Everson will handle it too. Yeah, um, I think he respects Cam Talbot a lot. So yeah, um, I'm just looking at stats here. It's incredible. Kaprizov is top five in the NHL in points and goals. Yeah. Um, even though Austin Matthews got to sixty, Kaprizov <laughs> finished with a, I think forty seven. So. Yeah. Um, just insane production from Kaprizov this season. And 
I'm just excited we finally have a superstar that we could potentially hang our hat on here. Yes. Um, that could kind of, you know, pick us up when the team's not playing so well. All it takes is just a crazy angle shot from Kaprizov or, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a game changer. The game can change when the puck's on his stick. So it's going to be fascinating. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy that this team's going to be at full health. I know it's getting Spurgeon and Dumba back recently and Greenway as well. Massive for this team. Uh, Zuccarello. Just a minor injury, it sounds like, so he'll be back. And then Felino avoiding a major injury after that cheap shot by the Colorado Avalanche. I still can't get over how – I think it was O'Connor. It was I can't remember exactly which player it was, but how he didn't get suspended. I mean, give me a break. So I know. That's ridiculous. In the game 82 situation, like Epson said after, like that's just not totally unnecessary. Yeah, just completely ridiculous. And, of course, it's Colorado. I hope hope they get smoked in the first round by Nashville. It probably won't happen. But, but Nashville's scrappy. They are, and I think Nashville can kind of hang with Colorado too. So, like, I'm kind of happy that that's the matchup that panned out because I think if it was Dallas, Colorado, Colorado probably would have smoked them. Yeah, over in five. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Dallas, I don't know if they have a great chance against Calgary. Probably not. But, um, yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see. Do you have any other uh, final thoughts on this playoff series before it gets rolling here? Yeah, one more thing I want to throw out there is we got to avoid taking any stupid penalties because yeah. the Blues will kill you for that because our penalty kill wasn't good in the first place. Like I don't think it's it's as bad as it was early on. Like I think it's gotten better as the season's progressed, but we're still probably like an average unit. But the, the Blues have one of the best power plays in the league, so like we have yeah. to avoid those situations at all costs. Like We can't, can't be giving them those chances because that can point them right back into a game or in, into a win. So yeah. really, I, I think we have to avoid that as much as possible. And Definitely keep our heads down as much as we can. Obviously, we gotta gotta protect our guys, but at the same time, like we can't can't be doing anything stupid out there because it's some of those. I mean, the the margin margin between winning and losing is so thin that yeah. it's like we we gotta basically keep our keep our heads on straight and make make good plays or make smart plays, I should say, and not get caught up in things we shouldn't be. Yeah, that's a phenomenal point of staying out of the box because. That's really how the Blues of Nashville have beat us up this season and even previous seasons is getting us in the box and smoking our penalty kill that's terrible. So yep, exactly. um, although our penalty kill did finish the season strong and the power play finished pretty strong too, so I'd like to see that sure. carry into the playoffs. But obviously everything's tighter in the playoffs. Everything's more intense. It's faster. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out. I, I know Everson's going to get these guys prepared. Yeah. But, um, man, it'd be so nice to see him come out win game one and just – Finally beat the Blues, put that behind them, and then uh, just try and take control of the series from there. Tone setter, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Please be sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram, and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you think this Wild Blues series will go? What are you looking forward to most? And uh, who do you expect to step up and produce for the Wild? So... Until next time, thanks for watching.